The Kamikaze drone from Iran, called the Shahid-136, with a Russian-designated name Geranium-2. Now let us look at why is this a big deal. This Russian-caliber cruise missile costs around $1 million, while the American Tomahawk cruise missile cost about $2 million. Comparing with the Shahid-136, it is more or less a low-budget cruise missile with a reported price tag of just $10,000 to $20,000 dependent on variants, while the average price of cars here in America is around $40,000. When launched in swarms, these are a menace in this modern battlefield. But in this content, we will look at how this drone works, the moped engine behind it, and the basic step-by-step -step process of how this works. Again, this wouldn't be fair if the pros and cons are not analyzed and how they are being tackled. We will also look on how to counter the drones with old and new weapon systems. So let's get straight to the content. This is the Iranian Sahid-136, a modern single-use loitering munition, or some might call it the Kamikaze, or suicide drones. Now let us analyze what is a loitering munition. A loitering munition, commonly referred to as a suicide drone or kamikaze drone. Loitering munitions are cheap rapid response time against hidden or covered targets that appear for short periods of time without positioning high-value drones close to the target area. It has its advantage and disadvantages, which would be clarified throughout our content. Now let us look at the specification. The drone has a reported length of 3.56 meter with a wingspan of 2.59 meter. The drone has a delta wing configuration. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size. As you can see, this is pretty huge for a loitering or suicide drone. The Al Sahid weights around 220 kg, while the warhead could weight ranging from 5 to 35 kg. It all depends on the mission. All that weight is amazingly being powered by a Mato MD-550, a 50-horsepower civilian engine, which makes it pretty slow. This is a small moped engine, or scooter engine sourced from China, at a cheap price. Let us look at how it sounds like. The soldiers on the battlefield reported it sounded like the World War II German planes the Stuka. Interestingly, the Germans intentionally developed this siren to create a psychological impact in the battlefield. They would install a wind-driven siren that uttered a screaming sound at a maximum dive speed. But instead of the German Stuka siren, in this modern battlefield you will be hearing a two-stroke moped buzzing in the air, which would be soaring through the sky. These are reported to be the flaps located just beside the two-stroke engine, and these are what are called the elevens, which function like the elevator of the plane. From what we know, the Al Sahid drones are guided by GLONASS, or anti-radiation seeker located in the middle of the fuselage. For those of you who are not familiar what are anti-radiation seeker, it is a missile or drone that is designed to detect and home in on an enemy radio emission source to strike its target. Combining the delta wing configuration with the two-stroke engine will give the drone a range of 1,000 kilometers, while the reported cruising range is 2,500 kilometers. Now, let us look at what is inside the belly of this drone. This is the RATO, or rocket-assisted takeoff, which we will be explaining later in the content. Let us look at the basic step-by-step -step process of how this works. Step number one. The drone is carried on a simple truck carrier that looks like it is for cargo transport. But inside this cover are these menacing swarm drones. Each launcher in a standard truck container transports around five menacing drones. Step number two. Inertial navigation or GLONASS data, a Russian alternative to GPS, are fed to these drones. Points to be noted they are using a civilian inertial navigation system, but could be upgraded in the future. Step number three. At a press of a button, the drone is launched with the rocket-assisted takeoff. This rocket-assisted takeoff is ejected just like this. This was installed to reduce weight and efficiency and let the two-stroke engine take over. 
Step number four. As these are swarm drones, a total of five to 10 are used all at once to overwhelm the enemy air defense system. Step number five. The drone will be loitering at extremely low altitudes, which would make them difficult to shoot. The UAV drones would be operating in a swarm. In addition, the Al Shahid 136 are quite small and have a composite structure, which makes them difficult to detect with the help of radars. Step number six. When it reached its targets, the drone will dive in with all five or just even two remaining drone, swarming in full speed to destroy the target. Now, let us look at its limitations. The precision of the drone terminal is derived from commercial inertial navigation system. If this is jammed or disabled or obstructed, both of these could stop the drone from getting to its target. As stated, this drone is flown at very low speed. This could be countered by the Javelin or even Stinger missiles, but the cost factor comes into play. The solution is the Gepard, which is an all-weather capable German self-propelled anti-aircraft gun with built-in radar. These could counter most of the Kamikaze drones at an effective range of 5.5 km. The second cheaper version is the Soviet Union anti-aircraft gun Zu-23 used by Ukraine. It was designed to engage low-flying targets at a range of 2.5 km, which are battle-tested against these drones. Considering all these limitations, we have to remember these are swarms drones operating in a group of five. One drone could always get past the defense system and thus create a dangerous weapon to the modern battlefield. At AI Tele, we produce basic engineering content regardless of countries or race. We love to know how stuff works. So smash the subscribe button to help us produce more content like these.